One of my favorite shop made jigs is this miter box that I made several years ago. I made it on the TV show and showed it off on a YouTube video as well. And it served me really well. It is set up to cut both 90 degree and right and left miters on small parts. And it's designed to work with a Japanese style pull saw. And that's what I used it for. However, that saw has been in use for a long time. It has a disposable blade and well, let's just say most of the teeth are missing. So I upgraded to a new saw. This one is like a gent style with kind of a similar handle, but it cuts on the push stroke. And I wanted to take the opportunity to remake this miter box to work on the pull stroke. Now the simplest way you could do it is to just take it and flip it around and then use it so that your cutting direction is into the fence on the piece. What guides the saw are these four sections here that are made out of hardboard. They have a groove on the back side that fits over a fence and these oversized holes allow you to fine tune the position of it so that it matches the thickness of the plate on your saw. So what I'm gonna do to get things started here to change this to use with a Western cutting saw is I'm making the base out of two layers of half inch MDF. It's a really low cost material, flat and stable and easy to cut. I cut these over at the table saw and then cut them to the final length. And the reason I'm going with two layers is on the front edge, I wanna add a cleat that will hook into the bottom of the miter box and have it act like a bench hook where it'll register against the front edge of the workbench and oppose my cutting action so it'll stay in place without me having to use clamps. Then I also cut a fence as well and those will get set into grooves in just a little while. First thing that I want to do though is to glue these two layers together. The glue I use, the speed set, sets up really fast, so that means we can get back to work here. What I want to do now is to cut a pair of grooves. One goes along the back edge on the top, and then another one on the bottom edge along the front for the cleat. I'm going to use the same bit setup for both of those grooves just to simplify things. I'm doing it here at the router table. I like the fact that at the router table, a straight bit gives me a really clean cut especially in this MDF. Before we get started on assembling the miter box, there's a little work that I wanna do on the fence here at the table saw. I'm gonna reuse the saw guides from the original miter box because they're still in great shape. And I use those to mark the location for the center 90 degree cut, as well as the right and left miter cuts on the fence. Then what I'm gonna do is, I have the saw blade set for just a very shallow cut here, and I'm gonna make a starter kerf at each of those locations. And that starter kerf allows space for the teeth of the saw, so that when you slide the saw plate in between the two guides, the teeth can be below the guides and not chew up the edge of them, and that would spoil your accuracy over time. At last, we can start bringing things together. So I'm gonna use a little bit of glue down in the bottom of the groove to hold the fence. And while that's setting up, I can start setting the saw guides in place, positioned right over the kerfs that they're gonna be in and mark the screw locations through the holes that are already there. Now remember I said earlier that those holes are pretty large and that gives me a little bit of adjustment space to dial in the fit of the saw guides to the plate of the saw. Once the fence and the saw guides are in place, 
will do the same thing, except a lot simpler here on the bottom face of the miter box. Run a bead of glue in, and then we'll clamp the cleat into position in this groove. Now, after the glue dries on the cleat, I can cut the starter kerfs in through the fence there using the saw guides as the guide, doing what they're supposed to do. So I have the two miter ones down. It's pretty easy to thread the blade of the saw through those edges on the saw guide. And then I can just concentrate on keeping the saw vertical. And we're all set. The miter box is all set up and refreshed for a whole new lease on life and many more years of service in my shop. And this old one, while it's served its purpose, it's time for either the trash bin or maybe it's gonna go out Viking style. We'll see you next time.